the song Anything Can Happen. Damn right it anything can. can happen. You're a great inspiration. Um, Ellen. Hi. Ellen. Hi. Nice uh, to meet you, too. Nice to meet you. All right, so uh, you had $300 to your name. Is that correct? That is right. $300 to your name. So you turn it into a multi-million dollar business. I mean, that is the greatest story. So how did you do this? Well, I was raised by an incredible single Mexican mama who really made a lot out of nothing all the time and constantly was showing me just to be resourceful, to show up, to try hard and figure it out. And she was always giving me opportunities to try stuff. Like one time I painted her bedroom yellow, sponge painted it yellow before she came home. And she came home and she was like, oh, that's cute. Okay. How old were you? Hi. <laughs> I was 14. Wow. All right, so what is the, the business and how did it happen? So when I was about 24 years old, I was working as a line cook at a two Michelin star restaurant and at Baco Mercat, two different restaurants in LA. My chef said to me, hey, there's a girl, she's gonna make us aprons, do you wanna buy one? And I was like, oh my gosh. I'd been thinking about this idea of an apron, I hated our uniforms, they didn't look good, they didn't feel good, and I'm also a runner, so I just wanted to have gear that made me look proper in the kitchen. And I was like, chef? I have an apron company. I just blurted it out before I could even pull myself together. And he was like, what are you talking about? You're a line cook in my kitchen. And I'm like, no, chef, I started a company. I have a doing business as, that's all I had. I had nothing else. I had no sewers. I didn't know how to sew. I had literally nothing, Ellen. And he was like, okay, all right, fine. 40 aprons, I need them in a month. And I was like, done. And I walked out, clocked out and was like, holy cow, what am I gonna do? and I just started bartering. I called friends, and I really focused on what do I have and not what do I not have, and that truly got me from zero to one, and I believe that is the hardest part of starting anything. So he had never, he didn't ask to see an apron as an example, thank God, because you didn't have one. <laughs> thank God. You had never made an apron before. No. Okay, so you didn't know how to make an apron. No. Who did you go to to say, how do you make an apron? I called a friend who, knew how to make patterns, and I was like, all right, well, I cook at two of the best restaurants in LA, I'm gonna use the skills that I've got. And I said, I will come and cook for you, it's like the equivalent of $300, so just make me a pattern, deal? And he was like, okay, fine. So I came over, I made them dinner, and uh, he made me my first pattern. And then from there I took that pattern and I went to somebody else and I was like, who do you know that sews in LA? And I speak Spanish fluently, thank God again, and so I called a bunch of people and I was like, ¿Quién conoces que sabe coser? Me tienen que ayudar. And just through person by person, it was like finding your way through Rome. You don't know where you're going, but you know you gotta get to your destination. So you, you, he, they give you this pattern and you liked the pattern right away that he gave you? What's, what's it worked. What's different about your apron than another apron? I have to tell you, those first aprons really sucked. <laughs> okay. They were really bad. We had this design, this idea that Chef and I developed, Joseph Centeno, and he was like, I want them to fit well. I want it to be nicer fabric. I want the straps to be a certain way. And when I delivered the aprons, they looked great, but 24 hours later, he called me into his office and he was like, Bennett, these aprons suck. What happened? <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. First of all, my job is on the line. This is my chef. This is my only job. What am I gonna do? And I said, Chef, I will take care of it. Give me half the aprons back. I'll fix the straps and I'll bring it in a week. And I, I knew that I had to make it right because now I was a business owner and I, need to I needed to be responsible for the commitment I had made. Your mother must be so proud of you. I mean, your mother must be so proud. And that's, that's from her giving you that freedom to do that. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back. So the book is called Dream First, Details Later, How to Quit Overthinking and Make It Happen. So tell everybody about this book. When I started this, at the ripe age of 24 years old with no MBA, no trust fund, really honestly nothing other than myself, I went back to my resourcefulness and I thought, what do I have, what can I do, how can I figure this out? So I went to the business book section and sure enough, every book was written by, no offense guys, men, and a lot of people that were extremely established. Like, And then I sold my company for $200 million and you're like, how does that have anything to do with what I'm doing? I'm trying to start something from zero. How do I take the first leap? So I wanted to write that book for the younger me who didn't know where to go, didn't know where to start, and I started anyway. And it felt like I took a machete into the forest and just was like hacking my way through and I 
learned a lot, I failed a lot, and I was very honest in that journey. And it's not some story that's just like cute and cool. It's really raw and real. Yes, yes it is. And it's, it's a great book. And I mean, I really hope that uh, this inspires anyone watching out there that you can make something happen. It's uh, Dream First, details later. It's in stores now. Um, and uh, by the way, everybody watching, you're all getting one.